Hi, I'm here with our mentor for this Saturday's workshop. Lisa Mezzacapa is a fabulous bass player, band leader, and composer, and she's going to take us on a listening tour of rhythm sections in jazz. This is part two of her workshop, which uh, she did part one in February. It was fantastic. And we learned so much about how the rhythm sections shape the sound of such important jazz ensembles as Duke Ellington's band, Charlie Parker's band, Count Basie's band, Miles Davis. So Lisa, can't wait for this Saturday. Tell us what we're gonna hear this time. Well, um, the first workshop kind of covered about maybe 40 years of music from the 20s to the early 60s. And uh, we kind of realized that we needed to plan a second one because there was so much to say about drummers and bass players and guitarists and pianists from that era that I realized that I still had, I still had at least one workshop's worth of music to talk about and new innovations and new um, kind of ideas that musicians have been cooking up since the 60s. So this time we're going to probably start exactly where we ended. We ended last session um, with Miles Davis, the second quintet in the early 60s, um, which to me is just like, the culmination of uh, a certain kind of rhythm section interaction um, where the roles are really clear and everyone is just at this like at a level of imagination and interaction that is just like uh, unparalleled really in that band. Um, and so we're going to start there just to kind of refresh on where the rhythm section kind of was at that moment in time. And then we're going to keep moving forward and talk about a lot of ways that you know, jazz musicians don't really sit still so much. And so there's a constant feeling of reinventing language, reinventing the roles and the ways people interact and uh, always looking for that new uh, kind of mode of expression. So we're gonna see how a lot of people just started to play with those earlier conventions of what should everybody in the band be doing, you know? Uh, and we'll look at Ornette Coleman's music and Albert Eiler's. And uh, we'll probably look a little bit at some music in the 70s that was really inspired by backbeats coming from funk and rock music. And uh, I think we'll also listen to some music that almost doesn't have a rhythm section in the traditional sense, like some, some groups without drums or piano. Um, and also I think maybe an ensemble that has, you know, two tubas and guitar as its rhythm section. And so we'll look at really creative ways that people have tried to move the music forward. That is really exciting and uh two tubas and guitar that takes us right back to sort of pre-New Orleans right well that's a real thing we're going to talk a lot about um how a lot of jazz musicians starting in the 60s started to reinvent their language and experiment a lot and so one of the things that actually was going on then is a lot of artists um coming out of the Chicago experimental black music scene in particular they were looking at older art forms and bringing those into really contemporary art forms so there is a real desire to look back at Dixieland look back at early New Orleans music and kind of skip what was just happening of that was bebop and kind of like look for inspiration in earlier kinds of black music. And so you see a lot of really creative hybrids. Lisa, you're so inspiring and in the way that you convey your love of this music and, and really give us the tools to listen in brand new ways. It's just wonderful. And I know people loved the first one and I'm sure we're really going to have a great time. I hope everyone will come and join us this Saturday. Thanks so much. Thank you, we're looking See forward you to then. it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.